It's Survivor's Friendly Fire Show, episode 204, for the end of July 2022. Like we said uh, last time, we're a weekly show now. Uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, Steve Wright, and joining me is my friend and yours, Ben Salter. Uh, how does it feel to have to commit to uh, a per-week thing with this show, Ben? It's very exciting. I think the listener will definitely agree that we're doing this live every week, and there'll be no problems. It'll be seamless. Oh my god. It's like... We're good and professional and yeah. great. Um, anyway. <laughs> it's good to be back. It's good to be a weekly show again. It's how we should be. Yes. Uh, and things that are back, we're getting right into this, Ben, because um, that was such a good segue. Uh, E3 yeah. 2023 is is back again. Ish. This, <laughs> this time, maybe more back than it was in 2022 when it was back and then wasn't back because now um, the show at least in some capacity, is being uh, organized by event producer Reed Popped, which you may know from uh, events such as PAX, PAX Australia, all the other PAXs, some of the Comic Cons, uh, and the Star Wars Celebration, to name a few. Uh, what do you think about that news specifically first? Uh, I think it's... E3 needed a bit of a change of format. It didn't really know what it wanted to be when it was still a thing pre-COVID. So I think it's good to have that. I think um, Reed Pop, who people who go to PAX probably have no idea who the company is behind it. They don't really care. They just like PAX, which is fair enough. Um, but I think they do a good job of that community interaction. If you're keen to go to that type of thing, um, makes sense. So I don't know how they're going to make it different to like a PAX in that maybe it has more stuff which is coming out in the future instead of like that just general culture feel about it. Um, but yeah, I think they're a good company to run it, but it is probably important to kind of separate the the E3 live stream and the announcements and the actual show itself. So they've always been kind of um, dealt up as a package deal and watching at home at like 3 a.m. That's kind of always felt like that's E3, but as we've said in previous episodes, it's not really. That's kind of the press conferences beforehand. Uh, so the, I don't think E3 is going to come back in a uh, live media conference sense. I think we're still going to have the um, pre-recorded videos. I think that's the way to go. It doesn't really make sense to do those live. They might have like what they did in Melbourne this year with like the live reactions type of thing. Um, and then E3 is the it's the convention. It's the walk around a convention center, stand in long lines and eventually play a demo. Um, yeah, I think it's a good company to do it. I don't know if it needs to coexist with Summer Games Fest and I'm not sure how it coexists with PAX. I'm not sure if there is, is there a PAX in LA. Uh, it's kind of the same. Well, so maybe that's how it works. Like it's it's... Yeah, it's very samey. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see what it actually looks like when it when it actually happens. It opens up a lot of questions that I don't like the potential answers like on either side of how I can see this going. So I, I guess back in the day, well, let's say 2015, just to try to put a date on things, like E3 was a, a media and business event where like you and I would be going to, to get hands on with games and to interview developers and it was really good for like especially us in australia because like you know we're a, a, a half a world away and you know we're all kind of in the same place and we can network and we can you know get access to people that we wouldn't necessarily get in person the business side is like eb games and jb hi-fi also go and they're in behind closed doors meetings where they're looking at you know square enix's forespoken and you know they're getting explained to them and they're you know thinking about how many units they want to buy for their retail chains based on where they think it's going to land and like the the public's need for this game and like that that's changed a lot at the at the tail end of like the current yeah. e3 like 2019 um it that that still existed but it was like half of the picture because then it was a lot of um general public admission which is not a bad thing it's it's just kind of like it's it's a different it's a different yeah thing altogether um whether or not that needed to happen i don't know like it made it hard for us to do our harder for us to do our jobs um so is this because it's repop and packs like is this going to be more consumer focused more like general public or is it going to be just like the know-how of repop but you know in some sort of 2015 or 2019 model we don't have the answers yet um I don't, I don't, I, I don't know whether where it's going to go, and the whole added wrench of the summer game fest, kind of like trying to muscle in on this. Like, 
I hope they work as partners and, you know, like we're better at the live stream stuff. So that'll be like the Jeff Keighley kind of thing and like repops the physical thing. Like that makes more sense to me, but I feel like it's mostly going to be two brands yeah. like butting heads trying to win, which I don't know who that benefits apart from either of those two companies. Yeah, I think the live event, which is kind of separate, will be fine. I think that if you're actually going in person, they because uh, Summer Game Fest announced that they will do it's an in-person event next year. Um, I think they're going to be two separate events, and that they're, they're not going to play nicely. Maybe in future years they eventually combine because they they probably can't both exist at the same time. Um, but yeah, I think I think they're both going to suffer because of the other one's existence. It's not going to fuel each other to do better. I think it's going to be like. You know, Activision says or whoever says they'll only go to one thing because they can't do both. Um, and then ultimately, which one do you go to? So that's been the problem with E3 recently, right? Like EA Play split off to be its own thing. Like just not being together kind of ruined the whole idea. And is in, in reviving one of them, you still have two competing um, shows. And potentially EA does its own thing and PlayStation doesn't turn up at all and Nintendo doesn't turn up to one of them or something. Yeah, it's it's hard to see it all working out. But we'll have to wait and see. We will, um, and hopefully we find out sooner than later. Uh, something that I want to quickly talk about um, before we get into our, our topic-based uh, format, then, is uh, I've got to play Stray. I have reviewed Ooh. Stray. It's on the website if you want to go check it out. It's it's a cat game, and it's very much a cat game um, with some puzzles and a little bit of combat. I, I've found the best parts of it come from just being a cat simulator but like not in the sense of like cat simulator 2022 it's fun to like walk across a keyboard and knock things off shelves and just like generally be a cat um you can just curl up and sleep in a ball sometimes on people's laps Sounds right sometimes the sonic like it's really it's really cute and adorable it's it kind of overstays its welcome in in some ways but if you like cats it's a love letter to cats if you have playstation plus as not essentials, the other ones deluxe and extra premium yeah. and extra, depending on your region. Um, it's definitely worth a little bit of a go. Um, maybe next week we'll talk about it more when you've had a chance to play yourself. Then, yeah, I'm keen to play. So, first game launching on PlayStation Plus, it should get a decent crowd checking it out. Yeah, well, and it's cute. It's like it's it's absolutely adorable. Um, I got to play Stray and be a cat on my OLED C2. And I didn't get to be... No, I didn't. I played it on my OLED C7, which is the Ooh. LG TV that I own. Um, but I have reviewed the LG C2, which is the We're gonna 2022 have to explain version. The, yeah, you do it. You're C2, better at this than this, I am. The C2 is better than the C7. doesn't make any sense, but it is. They've, for some reason, <laughs> LG have reset and just gone back to the beginning. So uh, the C2 trumps the C7, which came out, I guess, in 2017, maybe even before then. Yeah. Um, whatever it was. So, and what year is uh, your tv from which is like the highest number of of the c's i have i have two i've got a c i've got a b9 and a c x which is 10 c10 and then they reset after that this the is two but both of your tvs have let's just do it this way i i own a tv that's hdmi 2.0 which means it's only 4k and and 60 frames and hdr do both of your TVs have six or 120 frames and 4K and all that stuff? Yeah, you have better TVs than I do. And yeah. I got to have a better TV than you did do have. God. Um, but I, I cannot justify the purchase of, of a 2022 TV because I still have a, a 2020, 2017 TV that's perfectly good. It's like when it's that meme of like when you ask your mom for McDonald's and she's like, we have McDonald's at the house and it's like basically just like a hot Very dog similar. or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's... yeah. So, I mean, if you don't, if you're looking for a TV to upgrade to, I think the, the C2 would be great. Like that's the only one you can get at the moment. Um, I think the, the generally an LG OLED is a great way to play a current gen console. So that's really the question is if you've got a new console, do you need to get a good TV to match? I would probably say yes to take advantage of everything. It might depend a little on which console you have. Probably more important for Xbox and for PlayStation. Um, that's just because Xbox supports full uh, variable refresh rate, which is your TV will match the what it's kind of seeing. So you don't get any screen tearing. If there's any slowdown or frame drops, you don't actually notice at all, unless it's like significant. Um, and that's the whole time that's been applied to every Xbox game. It's only recently come to PlayStation, but it's only on a few select games so that don't really work. Um, but it doesn't need to in that a lot of multi-platform games kind of hit a perfect 60 on PlayStation, but they struggle on Xbox. I don't know why. 
on paper they should both be pretty similar but games seem better optimized for ps5 at least to this point um and i haven't really noticed because of the tv so i think it's a it's a good feature if you have invested in a console and you're looking to spend a couple of grand like they're not cheap these tvs um i think it's probably the way to go but as like as you say you don't need to upgrade them heaps like it's it's nice to have hdmi 2.1 but the screen itself is still great it'll last you 10 years no problem so um i think that's probably it's a big investment but a worthwhile one long term um i would note that you have a you reviewed a smaller size and i think that makes a difference in that we when we eventually upgraded our tv we went bigger so it went 65 inch makes that's makes more of a difference than anything else it's like people still come over and be like oh my god that tv is too big but now i've gotten used to it if i look at a different size screen i think too small how can you get how can you get a like how can you do that your TV is not too big. Your TV is amazing. And I like ever since yeah. I went to your house and, and saw games on your TV and saw like, so let's be honest. I like 4K quite a bit. I think things look amazing in 4K if they're, you know, mm. like high texture, uh, tech, high resolution textures. I think that's great. If a game is trying to hit something like 60 frames in 4K, that's like the sweet spot right now. Because if you're trying yeah. to get 120 frames, you're de- you're definitely cutting back on resolution. It's you know maybe like 1440p, yeah. maybe 1080p. Normally 1080. Yeah. yeah. So, like I guess if you have a 4K TV and it's capable of 60 frames, which it basically has to be with HDMI 2.0, like yeah, you know you're 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 most of the way there. There are things yeah. that you're missing out on, like if you're playing like a racing game and you want to go 120 frames, obviously it's going to be smoother. If you have VRR variable refresh refresh rate and like auto low latency turned on like it's even smoother it's crisp and amazing but like i think there's a bigger difference in looking at something in 30 frames to 60 than there is 60 to 120 so like it's that thing of you have a perfectly good like three thousand dollar tv that you just bought a couple years ago that you don't need to do again if you have a 1080p tv oh my god like this is a no-brainer spend some money and get like this will be good for a while because I don't think consoles are ever going to hit 4K and, and 120 frames this Not generation. for a while. Not this they'll, be, they'll be the occasional game that somehow can manage to do it, but it's going to be like the exception to the rule and not and not the norm. Um, yeah. And I feel like that's always going to be the case. Like TVs are going to, they're going to, you know, be pushing 8K and all this stuff like that. Hardware is not really capable of doing. And then you get the hardware that can be capable of doing it. And the TVs are like, oh, we're like, it's 7 million K now. Like, you should get this fancier one. So, like, I don't know. Like, you, you got to look at the situation and where yeah. you are and really decide if you want to drop that much money. Um, well, the, there's a PS5 box on the floor behind me and it says 8K on it. So, like, they, in 2020, Sony decided, let's push that. Of course, Sony does make TVs and that's what they're also trying to sell you. Like, it's been their game plan the whole time. Um, don't worry about that. I wouldn't bother going to like. There's no source material in 8K anyway. I don't think it makes much difference. Um, spend your money on a decent 4K TV. I think the OLED range generally from whichever provider. This is hashtag not sponsored, so anyone um, <laughs> is pretty good. If you want to sponsor us, LG, we're available to talk. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's probably better to spend your money on something which is you can actually use now, which is as you say, 4K 60 really. Um, but having that 120 option is nice. Things like COD let you turn it on and off, and it's it does play well, but you, you get a pretty big drop in resolution. So it's a matter of, do you want to do that? Do you not want to do that? Um, older TVs, I think yours maybe even can do 1080, 120. It's just clunky with the console. So you need to set your Xbox like at its setting level, like not the game, the Xbox console to 1080, 120. And I think the TV will then allow it. So you'd have to change that and like reset the console every time you want to change that in a game. It's not really worth the hassle, but if you, for some reason, only if you only play one game, maybe it's worth, you know, doing that. Um, yeah. Most people probably not. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, if the other thing is like, we just had prime day a week or however long ago, like there, there's this horrible thing of like people looking at a cheapish TV going like, Oh, perfect. It's cheap. It'll, it'll do exactly what I want it to do. And like generally, one of the things that you want is not there. Like it'll hit 120 frames like yeah. or 120 refresh rate, but it's like a, a 1080p TV, which is like, no, don't buy a 1080p TV right now, even if it's cheap. Like you, you want to have something that can do 4K, like, like it, HDMI 2.1, 4K, 120 uh, hertz or frames per second if we're talking games, like HDR, all that kind of stuff. 
if it seems too good to be true it's if it's super cheap it's probably because it's too good to be true um yeah and like if you're gonna if you're gonna get a new tv ideally like you know like i'm now stuck with this one that's like almost good enough but not quite good enough in my mind like you you don't want to be spending thousands of dollars every three years for a tv like it's that's insane so try to you know spend a little bit of money on something that you're gonna have for for six seven eight ten however many years That's actually good consumer advice. And I would say we talked about, I think uh, you'd never be disappointed if you go the bigger size. I think you always eventually get used to it and you think it's worthwhile, but I wouldn't put all your money into size. If you're going to say, let's get the 75 inch, no brand Kogan TV. um, If that's the same price as a 48 or a 55 inch, uh, much higher quality screen, I would go with that. I think you're going to have something which looks better. Uh, this is assuming you want to play a current gen console, of course. If all you're wanting to do is watch, you know, KO and 720p, then by all means, get the giant, cheap, nasty TV. But if you want to play your console and get the best out of it, I think you want to get the highest quality screen you can afford at the size you can afford. So don't try to stretch it to get a gigantic TV that's actually rubbish and it dies in two years anyway. So I think long term, that'll be a worse option. Exactly. And if you're like me, uh, don't make jokes about, you know, accidentally throwing a Wiimote or a Joy-Con into your TV, because if you do that and you get found out, it makes it really hard to be able to justify buying a new TV. Uh, anyway, uh, Ben, what, what else should we talk about that's not TV specific? Uh, well, I want to swing around to Rockstar Games because we, we had a little chat offline a little while ago about this. We haven't really on the podcast in that they, they barely release games anymore, but there were some rumors that they were going to release remasters of a bunch of old stuff. So they were going to do GTA 4 and Red Dead Redemption 1. Uh, apparently, these were the rumor didn't quite make sense timeline-wise, but I think that's not unsurprising in how these things eventually leak. Um, but apparently, they were on the table and started a few years ago. And then uh, Grove Street Games, the mobile developer, remastered GTA um, 3... What are they else? Was it there? Vice, Vice City, City. And San Yeah. The trilogy. Um, and that got a pretty poor reception. I think we gave it a 4.5 or so when it initially came out. And that was a very fair score at the time because it was just a buggy mess and it was a, a real cheap, dodgy cash in and not what these games deserved. Um, they have been substantially upgraded since then. So they're much better to play now. There's no getting around that they used the mobile ports, which were dodgy to begin with, to make them. So. Um, there's only so much you can improve them with. It would have been so much better if they'd used like the original Xbox version, which was already remastered from the PS2 versions, and they started there, but they didn't. Um, apparently, due to how that was received, they decided to just shelve them. And then there was a follow-up rumor more recently, which is they were also going to do a Series X and PS5 version of Red Dead Redemption 2, which, of course, is playable on those consoles, but it's back compat mode only. Um, and it, that seems like a no-brainer. Like games of that kind of 2018 era have mostly all had a current-gen patch. Well, they've done um, it with Grand Theft Auto V. Like they've put out the yeah, the which is older. Yeah. Uh, so that makes it seem like a no-brainer. They could sell it again, um, but they yeah apparently have been shelved for the same reason in that they want to put all their attention on GTA 6, which I think does make sense. That's what they should focus on. They've barely released a game for for ages. So. Uh, but it's strange. Like, why couldn't they outsource some of these to more capable studios? Like, Grove Street Games was not the right spot to do a GTA trilogy remaster. They expected three games from a mobile studio to be console quality. Um, and at that point, it was almost like next-gen console because it was they probably would have been making this at the end of the last gen. Uh, and they just they didn't have the time. They didn't really have the expertise. They probably should have taken that to a like a professional remastering studio or at least someone who had some level of experience doing that. And why couldn't they do that again with like GTA 4, for example? Like it's it seems like a no brainer. Yeah, like a Blue Point or something. Not not that they yeah. can because Blue Blue Point's now Sony. But like same idea. Um, and they also did that like horrible thing of like the Sonic Origins thing where they went, oh the the, the original games, they, we don't need those anymore because we have these new fancy versions. We're gonna like delist them from sale because who who needs those ones? You could just get these fancy shiny new ones that work perfectly, which didn't. Um, so like I, I get why Rockstar would because of all that be scared with the the new releases but also like they have so much money <laughs> they, could, yeah. they could do this properly they could absolutely money. do this properly um, they would all sell like crazy uh if you do have a series x you can play in back and pat mode gta 4 and red dead redemption 1 
And they're almost like a bare bones, like early days, last gen remaster just on their own. Cause they all have their up res to 4k. I think they even both, at least one of them has a frame rate boost. So like they, maybe Red Dead does. I don't think GTA does. Red Dead does for uh, sure. And so they, they run so much better. They still feel like the control wise are a bit clunky. They're a bit kind of dated 10 year old games. I think GTA is more like 15 years old. Uh, and so you kind of feel it from that point of view, but they actually run pretty well. But then there's no way to play these games properly on PlayStation. Like we we don't have the PS3 streaming in Australia, so they just they don't exist um, on your PS5, which is kind of disappointing. And yeah, it's just it seems so obvious, especially GTA 4. Like it's so old and it has the GTA name. Like it would just sell like crazy. There there are so many Rockstar Studios around the world now. I'm um, yeah, like it it kind of it it like beggars belief as to as to why they can't spare some resources internal or otherwise to to like yeah. i don't know but I'll, like on the same page like i we talked about it, i think last week like i i delete all the things i used to have on my hard drive because like i'm not going to play 95% of the games that i have from xbox 360 or xbox 1 or whatever that i just happen to have on my hard drive in case i ever want to play them um so and like I I kind of dabbled in San Andreas when they released the the GTA trilogy, but like I didn't really get fully into it again. I've like you know I've started GTA Five even like five or six times and play for a couple hours and then go I'm like I've done that. I don't need to do it again. Um, in that like respect, I'm kind of just happy to to focus on the future and get GTA Six out. But like that's i don't think that's going to be anytime soon so like it's almost like a stopgap measure to release re-release some of these games you'd think i don't know yeah well and especially red dead 2 like i mean that's a a modern game that would be an easier one to do like we could talk about this till we're blue in the face and hopefully we get some some news on this either way like a definite shelving because it's kind of like right now like oh maybe we're gonna still do it but we're not really focusing on it or yes we're we're back doing it I'm babbling. Uh, let's talk about something else. And that would be what's happening to these weird subscription programs that started out before the actual subscription programs that are now in existence. Uh, those being Xbox Games with Gold and I guess PS Plus Essentials. The the core yeah. offerings that used to give you monthly games for free, which kind of seems silly if you're on Game Pass or a higher plus tier, which gives you a library of games that just kind of rotate every so often. Too many things, Steve. Why do these exist now? Don't make any sense. Uh, and so Xbox is killing 360 games. They're done. They're not coming to Games with Gold anymore. They've pretty much said we can't do any more. Uh, and the reason they forgot to mention in that email is because every game through Games with Gold had to be back compat for like the last three or four years. And they've, they've stopped doing that. So there's no more games to give, basically. Uh, games with Gold has been awful since game pass launched and that's because they don't want to put their good stuff out through this like it's a legacy service that they feel compelled to do um so maybe hopefully the xbox one games get a little bit better because they they need to but i feel like they could just kill it like get rid of it there's no real point to this anymore well and like the reason that they're killing the 360 games is that i think like well not even just the one but i know like torchlight's one of the ones that they released or announced the last month or so ago and like I think that's been on at least once before, maybe twice before. So like they've they've just run yeah. out of games to to give to people for free because most of us who want to use multiplayer already have them. Um, it was a cool little like addition when you were paying for like live gold, which was multiplayer, and you got some games. And same idea for PlayStation Plus Essentials, or when it was just called PlayStation Plus. Like you're paying for cloud saves in Sony's case, and you're playing paying for multiplayer. You get whatever game per month um unnecessary i think i think most of us who who would pay into the the lowest tier of a a subscription program will pay into the library tier so that's you know game pass or at least deluxe on playstation plus and like all the games that you want are there so yeah it's it's this weird gesture that like is is slowly making less sense well, and Sony stopped giving out PS3 and Vita games in 2019. So they, they cut the last gen way before Microsoft did. And as a result, their games have been better. Like uh, PlayStation Plus games have been better than games with gold for ages. Definitely, no doubt about that. But there's been no PlayStation Plus other catalog since until now. Like we've only had that for a month. 
I don't think they're going to give out games of that same quality for much longer. I feel like maybe the next couple of months, there's things which are already signed up and already ready to go. But in six months' time, I think like if they have something good to give, they're going to want to put that in the big subscription to get you to sign up to the higher tier. They're not going to just give it away in essentials. So what's the point of having that there other than just ticking a box because it's what they've always done? And I'd love to kind of see... Like, it's the, it's the thing that has kind of been plaguing Game Pass since it came out. Like, I talked to Phil Spencer, and I'm like, how does this make sense from a business standpoint? Give me the numbers. And he's like, of course I'm not going to do that. That's yeah. par- that's paraphrasing. But, like, um, take PlayStation Plus in July, I think, as an example, where, like, you got Man of Medan as a, as a free you get to keep for the length of your subscription ever. Like, they must be paying, in this case, Bandai Namco, well, like, I don't know, I'm assuming that they pay Bandai Namco something for that to happen, because, like, yeah. if I have PlayStation Plus, I'll never buy Man of Medan, because I get it for free, as long as I pay my subscription, I own it for, like, the duration of that period of time. So they must have to compensate Bandai Namco. I don't think Bandai Namco would say, like, just here, take this, just give this to people for free. You yeah, get money, course. but we don't. Um, whereas, like, if they put it in the library of games available to subscribers like they can choose or like agree to when the contractual obligation of that has passed yeah, so like you you, you might own it for six months but then you don't anymore and if you really like it you give money to bandai namco to to buy the game and own it properly so like it just makes no business sense in it like it provided that i'm assuming all this works the way I think it does. Like, it makes no sense for Sony or publishers to want to keep doing these monthly games, right? Yeah, right. well, on the flip side, as a player, so yes, you get to keep... If you remember to redeem it, you get to keep that game forever as long as you have a subscription. Um, <clears throat> the flip side is that if you don't get it, you can never get it again. Like, it's like, what about the people who didn't have a subscription five years ago when the great games were being released? You can just... They don't normally come up a second time. Whereas if it's in the library, you can just play whatever's there. You subscribe today, you get all those games. You subscribe in two years, you get what's there in two years. If you subscribe to Essentials today, you get two games only, like whatever the two games are there now. So there is that element of people who missed the good stuff years ago can still get them if they're in the library. Um, but yeah, you're right. I didn't really consider that there. Once you do get them, you've got them forever. And that probably doesn't work with how the rest of the games work from a contract point of view. Yeah. Well... I, I I used to go and download all the, the games with gold games and all the PlayStation Plus games. And like I probably years ago there was a certain point where I just went, nah. Like I, I can't even be bothered to go and spend two and minutes to go and like click Because they're they're not they're not good. Sorry, sorry the games that are on these lists. They're not great. Um Whereas like I found Friday the thirteenth on the PlayStation Plus deluxe tier and I downloaded it, and then I went, oh, I think I played that on Xbox. I think I've got some achievements in that. Maybe I should try to, you know, like, play that version and, and, you know, like, top up those that list before I, you know, play a second version. And it was, like, 20 bucks on the store, because I, I think it was a game that was maybe, like, a free play weekend or something. Like, I played oh, yeah. it, but I didn't own it. And I'm like, ah, it's 20 bucks. Like, I'll just buy it. And then I can keep, you know, like, I, I can work towards the achievements that I've already started. Like, so I've just given money to to Gun Media and whoever developed it, Ilphonic, as opposed to like playing the free version that I had, which is insane to me. But that is that is insane. I don't know why you did that. Because <laughs> you already achie- had because achievements. No, but like, but th- they've they've found that people are you know on Game Pass. I don't know if there's been a lot of study on. Oh, and there's like there's not discounts on on PlayStation Plus, but like there's there's numerous records of. You know, like games doing really well on Game Pass because people decide to buy them even if they can still access them for their subscriptions. So, like, yeah, like yeah. once again, like another thing that works that doesn't apply to the monthly free games that are just getting worse and worse and worse. Because why would you waste a good game in those avenues? Yeah, I think they'll keep getting worse, but they probably won't get rid of them because they kind of feel like we we offer this, we'll get too much flack, the competitor does it, so we need to do it. Um, so I hope I'm proven wrong, but I think these are just going to get worse and worse and the, the big hitting good games are going to just be in the library. Unless they eventually kind of say it's in both, like if this is your Games with Gold or PlayStation Essential game this month and it's also in the Game Pass or the Essential or whatever it's called, Deluxe Library. 
that would be kind of pointless, but I can kind of see them doing that as a, we've ticked all the boxes and we've done it and here you go. We don't really care. Or they give you like a bigger discount. Like it's, it's 80% off if you want to yeah. buy it fully as opposed to the 10% or something that you get. Like if you, if you really like this one and you want to own it for the, the rest of time or until we turn off the digital server or yeah. whatever, um, I don't know. Once again, I'm trying to solve problems that I'm s totally not suited to solve. <laughs> no, I think it's a it's a problem we don't really need to solve, and it's a problem that's not going to go away. So I think we'll just leave it there. Exactly. Um, and I think a, a short show is a good show, to be honest, Ben. That's so it, yeah. uh, how do we find you on the internet? I am Ben underscore Salter on Twitter, and I actually don't know what's going on at the moment. There's there's not a lot to play. I'm working my way through the backlog, but I'm going to try Stray, so maybe I'll be tweeting about that. I was going to say, uh, like, we... I feel like you're you're so, like, calling for GoldenEye, even if it has been announced at this point, or in, you mm. know, like, six months, you're just going to, like, five years from now still be demanding GoldenEye be re-released. Yeah, um, it's going to be a long time. Like a robot. Like, you just forget that it's available, you know, hopefully at some point. Yeah. I will say I'm kind of enjoying this lull. I'm, I'm slowly getting through my backlog. So, very slowly, but it's I'm taking off some things, which I think otherwise I wouldn't have played. Um, they always would have just sat in that group of to play soon. I don't know if I'm ever going to start Cyberpunk. It's right there. It's been in the backlog for forever. Uh, but maybe it could happen. Matt is off. Uh, no, he's not off. He's on work this weekend. He is working. I have the weekend to myself to be at home. Uh, we should play Fall Guys. We I've only been that. trying to get you to play Fall Guys for like a year. Uh, yeah. anyway, uh, yeah. I'm asked yeah, right. Yeah, I'm S right AU on the internets. Uh, if you like the show, if you want to tell your friends about the show, that'd be amazing. You can also just give us a positive review on your podcast platform of choice. You can smack that subscribe button and that like button on YouTube if you're watching the video version of this podcast. Uh, and we are always happy to take your feedback at podcast at survivor.com. Let us know what you think about the show. If this weekly format is ticking boxes. Uh, otherwise, we might have a lot of stuff to talk about next week, Ben, in terms of like the Hot Wheels thing and Forza. We'll talk about some Stray. There's probably other games coming out. Like we're slowly getting a little bit here and there. We'll see how Stop we go. Stop happening. We'll take you through it. Exactly. Next week. Be there. That's right.